So the first question I have is, what inspired Heart and Soul? Man, I just kind of wanted to be expressive towards hip hop. Hip hop saved uh, so many of our lives. You know, every now and then I just do a, a hip hop ode. So that was my hip hop ode on this project. I've been dedicated, you know what I mean, for a long time. And this game is starting to pay me right now. But you know, for the monetary shit, like I, I, I get a lot of respect from people I respect. So just to let them know, like, put my heart and my soul in it. Like, I don't care about nothing else. So I, I just wanted that message to come across. And I wanted to be the first thing you hear so you know what type of time I'm on when you get, that, when you, when you get the tape. I noticed this album, this EP, has a lot of like jazzier feel to it. What made you go that route? Um, That's what I was feeling. I was intending to make the album that I'm going to make next. The next album to make is um, uh, Pull My The Fuck Tradition Up. So I was gonna make like an East Coast rap album, but the jazzier beats was catching me. I was looking for beats and the jazzier ones caught me and you, you really can't deny creativity, right? So you just kind of got to flow with it. So this time I had to get out of my system before I make who am I to fuck tradition up. So um, here's one of the things you got to do. Wow. What's your writing process? Do you find the instrumental first or do you start writing and then find something that matches? It, it depends. If I'm in traffic, I write and then I find a beat later. Um, if I sit down with it, sometimes I write in traffic too, because I'm just always in traffic. Um, but yeah, I'll find a beat later. It all don't really matter. Like I could create on the spot. I can just not write it, write it. It, it really don't matter. Like I'm really kind of fluid with the way I um, produce the records, but it's, it can hit me at any time, anywhere. So it, it really, it's really no fun, but honestly. That was a trick question, because on one of the records you said you spent a couple days looking for the instrumental and then it all flows to you. I got was there a song that took a while to create? And were there other ones that just flowed immediately and came to you? Yeah, let me say this. I spent a long time on the beat. And uh, what, was the, what, was the, what was the question? I was saying, was there songs that took a while to come together? And was there other songs that just yeah, well, flow wrote, to you. No, no, no. It was just, the, it wasn't the, it wasn't writing the records. It was the flow of the actual, um, all right. So I started and I wrote two records in like 10 minutes. And then I didn't write anything for like two months. And then I wrote the next two records. You know what I mean? So it wasn't really like the start and stop ain't really had nothing to do with nothing creative. I was just living life. And then the other two songs came to me and I was like, this is within the same flow. I already had the beat type of January 1st, January 1st, I wrote two songs. And then maybe like the middle of March, middle of the end of February, I, I wrote two other songs and, and laid them. Got my homegirl, Didactic and K to really uh, do the intro. Um, I, I knew from the, from the time I heard her voice, I wanted to work with her and do something with her. So um, I just got her to do the intro and she killed it. She snapped, she snapped. So shout out to Didactic and MK. How did you know you were actually done? Like, this is the EP, this is the amount of songs, these are the songs. Like, how did you know? Uh, Cause it sounded full, it sounded complete. You know what I mean? It sounded like, it sounded like it was done. Um, sonically, I had done all I wanted to do, and lyrically, I said all I wanted to say for this time. So it was like, it's good. Let's just, let's just wrap it up, you know what I mean? Uh, that's great. Like, how, like, 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 when you, you have an intimate time, right? How, how you know? How you know it's over? It just feels right. It feels like it's saying. the time. Just, oh yeah, let me get up. <laughs> so, what's your favorite song on the project? I don't have a favorite song. I don't have a favorite song. The one that was super fun to record, and that was um, "Can't Nobody Hold the God" because that tempo is so easy and hard to catch at the same time. You know what I mean? Because it's so slow. That is like, you gotta stay the pace, but the, the amount, it's, it's just fun, it's just fun. You've been rapping for a very long time because I know you once said that you've been doing this. Uh, yeah, what you saying? You've been rapping for a very long time. I know you talked about your interest in music since you was a child when you had cassette tapes and you would record songs and you would write all the verses yourself. Yeah. Um, now you know where you are now is there anything that surprises you about rapping or creating music uh nope i'm surprised that i haven't just gone ahead and just made my debut album that's what i'm surprised about i'm surprised i can hold these stories and these rhymes in this long and this concept this long 
that's what I'm surprised about. Other than that, I ain't really surprised about my music to do that. Nah, it's regular shit. What's the feedback that you've been getting so far um, with it being, being out? Well, one, the feedback is um, money. Uh, you know, people spend their hard earned with me. I don't, ne I don't never want to downplay somebody that's spending their money. I just gotta say, one, everybody who supported gave me way more money than they uh, had to, because it was I'm only charging four, not even charging. Um, four forty-four is the price of the tape, and uh, I, I think only one person spent four forty-four so far. You know what I mean? And uh, that's dope. That's why I do the the, the, the super indie shit. You know what I mean? The straight to consumer shit and keep it like that. You know what I mean? But I think people are just uh, reminded though that. When I sit down, I got a, a particular direction, a particular vibe that I can create something that's a uh, real album, even if it ain't album length, you know what I mean? Because I'm that type of artist. I'm not like a directionless artist. A lot of people just like create, create. I can do that on my freestyle. I just come up with hot bars. And when, I, when I sit down, I'm saying something. Yeah, speaking of indie, um, how do you feel about that process of creating an album, putting it out and doing it as an indie artist? In 2024, I think it's the best place to be. Like on the on the tape, I said I'd be the only nigga with a deal, but that's like technical. Like it's not like I'm, that's something I'm looking for. Um, I keep thinking you're giving me signs. You touch it. No. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't really care. I don't. I like that. That whole uh, machine versus anything. You know what I'm saying? It's clear what side I'm on. Well, let me ask this question. Yeah. I say that because. I remember you talked about selling uh, tapes outside of the car yeah. in Philly, yeah. and now in 2024 in a complete like digital marketplace. Yeah, is it a different feeling? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm bringing the feeling back. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, that's why I've got a PDF with the book. Like, I, I put the mini book in there as part of like you know you have to uh, have something extra with it. You know how you used to flip through and get the yeah. pictures. Like yeah. the next album, like will be the physical will be like the whole thing. You got to get the physical to even get the digital. Right, but that's that's in the future. I did for sure want to get that feeling of the book cover and the physical. So we working towards that, man. Um, it's, I don't I don't like the digital space to be honest. I don't like just you download an album and then that's the album. Like that's the experience is the download. You get what I'm saying? Or just the stream. That's even worse. That don't even feel like it's yours. Feel like it belong to everybody and you just there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like a concert you just walked up on and even pay and just walked out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't I don't like that. So everything I do is gonna be good towards like creating a physical thing, even if it's not really physical. Because like I said, next tape you'll have to get the physical to even have the digital. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of the bit the book, the cover, um, the intro, I feel like there is such a strong message that you get from Big Holy, like What's the what are you trying to say overall? Because I hear you talk about um, wisdom and like all those other things. Yeah, conviction. Well, yeah. Uh, freedom, conviction, wisdom, balance. I never leave home without the chain. Everybody got a hoodie is getting one. Vincent Williams, I owe one too. I will be sending that soon. Um, it's always about that. It's always about freedom, conviction, wisdom, balance. It's the four pillars of G Holy, and it's always, it's never going to change. You know what I mean? Um, but. This one in particular was just about being your big self. Your big self, your biggest self. So Big Holy is my version of my big self. It's to being your grandest self, being your highest self at whatever time that you can be. You know what I'm saying? Whatever time you consciously have to uh, be aware enough to even do it. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. man, I should just be my highest self right now. I should do some breathing. I should do something for somebody. I should do, you know what I mean? So um, it was that. It was me and my big self uh, inspiring your biggest self. So that's what Big Holy is about. Like that. Like the book was gonna be called "Be Your Big Self" or "Be Your Biggest Self." But, um, I just want to let everybody be, you know, get their mushroom. Wow. Um, Pause on the mushroom. I'm saying, you know, marry. <laughs> yeah. Like How do you uh, draw the line or find the balance between, you know, teaching, or and also like trying not to be preachy? Or is that something you not you don't care about? Well, I'm dope, right? So I'm never preachy because I'm fine. So I can really say anything. Like, no disrespect. Like, I'm never really going to come off like Chuck D because I got too much sauce. You get what I'm saying? But, so I don't really worry about being preachy because it's never really going to come off that way. You know what I mean? I'm never going to... 
Like, I don't, I don't even look like that. You know what I mean? I don't look like a nigga that preaches. So I don't really got to worry about it. I don't got one of them type of faces, that type of swag. So um, I could preach all day. I don't, I, don't, I don't really have to worry about it. I feel like Jam Session was inspired by something in specific. Like something maybe, was it a movie or a song or something? Like, because, you know, it kind of reminds me of like Love Jones. Um when the main character is on stage and like, or is it inspired by like Spike Lee's Mo Better Blues? Like, I feel like there's something there. Yeah. Um, or like 90s poetry lounge, like something. Am I correct? I, I, are you trying to say it was inspired by something you did? No, no, oh. no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. It was like, I just picture myself being at like one of them spots, one of them real low key spots and just practicing material kind of like, um, like comedians do. And they just they, they go over material in a small spot and then a bigger and bigger spot keep practicing so it was like that like i had like five different rhymes i didn't know which one to choose so i didn't choose i just went up there and did a jam session you know what I mean? so, um and i left space for whoever would want to do their version of it at the end so. if you had to describe big holy in one sentence yeah. Uh, what would that sentence be without saying what's on your necklace but that would be a cheat yeah yeah, yeah. conscious elevation mm, conscious elevation two words that's dope so the I have one more question what can we expect now I mean you did a jazzy EP that definitely feels like it has east coast inspirations um, and a lot of it is storytelling and it has a really just feel good vibe with all the motivational and inspiring elements. So where do you go next from here? Who am I to fuck tradition up? June. May, June. Nine songs of the best classic East Coast album. Classic East Coast rap album. I gotta get that out. I have to get that out of it before I tell my story. So I'm gonna do that. Dream Awake, I'll tell my story. And then on Live Holy, I'll tell everybody's story. Yeah. That's the plan. I, know I can I put them all out this year too. I know I said I had one. That was my oh. last question, but I actually have one more. Mm -hmm. So I see the merch. Um, Not on me right now. No, but I've seen it online, mm -hmm. and um, and on I your. I want to get my last day of not wearing my own. <laughs> and also on your page. So how does it connect with the dream team or the conviction, freedom, wisdom, like everything that you say that it represents the um, conscious elevation, all those things. Yeah, well, everything works in the dream is the living, right? So I only got one piece of merch out right now. Everything works in the dream. Um, that was, I actually think Dash did that. I can say that because Dame Dash ain't no nut-ass nigga and he not gonna try to, like, you know what I mean? Come take, take all my money from me because I used his, what he said, you know what I mean? Dame got the illest quotes about dreams. So uh, everything works in a dream. It connects to your bigger self because your higher self is always uh, moving forward and elevating and getting to the dream. So um, I think it, I think it goes right in line. With it, you know what I mean? Because what it, what it, what are you being your bigger self? For? It's to accomplish your dream. So I think it, it's smooth, right in line. I don't, nothing I do is like out of line with what I do. I know what I do and I know what I don't and I stay with what I do. You know what I mean? Because it's the easiest thing to do. So yeah, I think it goes right in line. Man, everything works in a dream. Make sure you grab like a hoodie. Sure. Okay, and now this is the actual final, final, final question. Sure. Um, you have a lot of takes over the years, over over a decade. Probably got 20. Yeah, 20 takes. exactly. Yeah. So where would you put this EP? Yeah. Would you put this at the very top? Would you put this at the middle? Would you put this at the best EP that you've ever done? Where does it go? Uh, as far as EPs, yeah, this is definitely the best EP I've ever done. Yeah. Wow. Um. Cause I've only done two. I've done 98 EP, and I've done this one. I think this one is definitely better. Even though 98 was dope, 98 was dope. Shout out to my man Matt. He was on there. Um, he helped me a lot with that too. But um, nah, this is better. It's more cohesive. It, it kind of just show more what I could do. Like, uh, you know, when I stay focused and on a the theme, on a the topic, on a specific vibe. You know what I mean? So I think it, I think it's a lot better. It's my best. It's my best EP. I'm about to make my best tape. I'm about to make my best mixtape, I'm about to make my best album, I'm in my best form. I'm in, I'm in my best shape, you know what I'm saying? I'm in my best mental, I'm in my best spiritual, constant elevation. Okay, last, last, last question. <laughs> so, for somebody who is coming up as an MC, what advice would you give them to create an EP with flow and ease the way that you did Big Cody? Uh, 
I feel like this for you. Um, I think you just do what comes naturally, right? So even if you think that, because this is my version of like shaking off, you know, I don't want to say rust, but like just shaking off some, you know, inactivity, you know what I'm saying? Like when you get back in the gym, so keep doing it because if I came up with this out of, yo, I just have to get this off to get to my next level, you, you might just have a gym. You never know where the gym gonna come from. So just keep writing, keep recording, and then you just will come up with something. You'll find something, you'll be like, oh, that's my groove, and then you, you know what I mean? It's like anything. It's like learning to, to run track or learning to play ball. Like one day you make a jump shot, you'll be like, I could do that a million times and make a lot of them. You know what I mean? So just keep, yeah, repetition. For sure. Okay, well, I thank you. I will, I enjoy interviewing you. You got sexy you. brown life. eyes. I enjoy you in life. And um, I don't know why you're so fucking reckless. <laughs> um, but um, now the light is on. Wow, that's amazing. So thank you. All right. Peace.